There, that's the button, isn't it? Look, sounds working, that's good. Does that work? There we go, beautiful. And let me just push that into the corner there. Oh, I've, oh dear, hang on. No, there's always something I've forgotten. Now, please don't crash on me. I'm changing resolution. Keep changes. Okay, that looks good. Okay, yeah, snap like that. Let's just do a quick check. Yeah, that looks great. There we go. Welcome in, everyone. How you doing? It's Wednesday. Hoff here. Let's say some hellos. Zeron, mate, how you doing? Hope you're well. Uh, Curl. Commander Keen, um, Neversoft, Menemo, obviously. <coughs> um, Menemo, which of you lot are, go, are coming to a deadline then? Uh, Spec Chumster, how you doing, Retro32? Carl, thank you very much for uh, <coughs> for this version one. I'll explain what this is in a minute. Uh, big ups, uh, Fuel Snable, Doxter, who else did I miss there? Um, Francis, Tib Chip, um, Synesthesia, I saw you in there as well. Uh, Waterman as well, Curl, uh, who else have we got? Yeah, Flexion as well, Rob Smith as well. Uh, well, Rob's here, so um, I know it's going to be. Uh, I know it's going to be that. It did the horn uh, last time I tested it, so. Now lost as well. Welcome in. Um, uh, yeah, do you know what? If we didn't mention the action replay last week, did we? Um, because I've got a music disc to finish. So we're doing the music disc for the next uh, three weeks, I think. We'll see. See how we get on. Um, but yeah, the uh, the action replay disassembly did come along quite well. Um, there is a lot still to do, but um, maybe we'll just have a little poke at it and see, see what's in there. Because I did a bunch of stuff, but I can't remember where I was at. I think you just need to work out what all the variables are now. Um, so yes, um, what we're we doing this week? We're doing the music disc. So you remember? Let's just uh, let me just show you actually. Last week, right? So we ended the stream here last week. Remember? I'm trying to draw that waveform, and something wasn't right. Yeah, yeah. Fred, second, welcome in. Hey, hash, question mark. I don't understand what's going on there. Anyway, so you remember we were trying to draw the waveform. So I'll show you where we got to after that. Um, but yeah, we're going to be working on that for probably for the next couple of weeks. There is a lot to do. Um, but it's progressed pretty far. So, um, so yeah, uh, where do we want to go there? There we go. No, there. There we go. I think we just run straight in here. Um, I have no idea. Oh, oh, I get it. Of course, I get it. I got it. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's an Amiga World card, isn't it? Sorry. Sorry. I'll just pack up all my Amigas and um, and give up the demo scene and coding completely right now. My Amiga credentials have now been. Uh, um, I've got a lot. I've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, Platon, mate. How you doing? Uh, Olympian subscriber Prime, thank you very much Olympian, welcome in. Um, if you've not been here before, we do coding and stuff, um, and we also do cracking. Um, uh, but it's Deadline Demo Party in three weeks time. Uh, Hitch, with the raid, welcome in Raiders. We've only just started, so uh, welcome in. Lovely to see you earlier mate, and uh, looks like you're having much more success with that uh, AGS um, USB stick than you were the uh, Mini Amiga. So. Hey guys, just want to say that if you do not follow DJ Hoffman on Twitch, then you are an idiot. Thank you very much. There we go. <laughs> You're undecided. All right. Well, the best thing to do is just plug the 500 back in, right? So, you know. You're going to have to prep something for deadline. Yes. <clears throat> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, flow from as well. Welcome in. Uh, we're just looking at a blank screen at the moment. It's my action replay. So, are oh, the alert box is working again? How about that? Brilliant. <laughs> um, Axie, despicable meme, um, inconsiderate deed, 
Mitch and Walker Rogo. Ro, ro, Wal, Walker Rogo. Ro, ro, no. Walker. <laughs> um, give Commander Keen a big. Uh, uh, oh, hang on. Bloody hell. He's that. Doxter. Hang on, wait a minute. You lot, give Commander Keen a hug. Uh, binary counter, zero shadow, flexion, uh, anti, and pookie. Give Doxter a big hug. He's gifted you a sub. Does it sound alright? Like, it feels like. I've got that out of the wrong, wrong place. Yeah, no, that's alright. Let's just turn that down a touch, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Um, thank you, guys. Much love, much love. Um, so, you know how we do this. We run some demos, then we get on with some coding. So, I'm not going to tell you how many discs I've got or what numbers they are. Two flow froms in there. Yep, disc two. We've got a disc two. <laughs> I'm going to label one of them uh, 1337 next time, and then we'll see if someone gets it. Right, I don't know what these are. I can't remember. I only wrote them a few minutes ago. Oh, there we go. Oh, ren rendering samples. Should have waited for that. Well, this is a nice way to... I, I would have rather just a uh, progress bar myself. I don't know about you. It'd be a lot easier. Oh, no, there's a progress. Oh, my God. Look at that. This is going to take ages. There's the progress there on the left-hand side, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Greedy musician. Yeah, I know. Another progress bar stream, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Imploder bar's gone bad, yes, many might. <clears throat> Does that progress bar really need to get all the way to the top? Because this is going to take forever. Uh, what kind of beer have we got today? Uh, Hazy Jane. It's the uh, uh, the lesser popular of the uh, IPA Stellas, as I call them. Barn, yeah, I hope it. I hope it turns out to be a, a, a silly old chip tune after this. I'm not sure why you need to see all of the uh, envelopes during the. Uh, uh, when it en uh, when it en when it enters tops when it enters tops then it fails. Probably not. It'll probably be fine. Uh, it's not a nuke intro. I can't remember. I picked stuff from uh, um, before 2012, I think, 2011 and back. I said, I'm going to get sick of this tune pretty soon. I need to switch up what's on the music disc because it's the default first tune because I have listened to it for four days straight. Dudek1337, welcome in. This is taking forever. <clears throat> well, welcome to the progress bar stream. Uh, plot twist, this is the demo and the credits roll, but it's a damn fine soundtrack. But give me a black screen with a bit of text and a decent tune. I'll give you a thumbs up. Um, uh, TTD, yeah, rip the module when it's done. I mean, we could do it in Win UAE. We could run it in turbo mode. It'd take a lot less time than this, wouldn't it? Uh, Pyro, yeah, that's working. Do you know what? My bi-quad filter is quicker than this. <laughs> See, I love so much of this shit music. So will I. <clears throat> At which point is pre calc taking the piss? Ask an AGA demo. Mum 
Much sample, wow. It's getting close though, look. Uh, it depends which demo you run. And what I hate about some of those demos is I really want to play them on stream, but like you literally have to, you've got no idea how long it's going to take, and it's just sitting there. Your sales director is quicker than this. <laughs> now that shot's fired. Okay. Okay. What is a decent tune? That is a good point. Right, I'm going to mute that now. We're going to go in. We're going to enjoy the progress bar together in silence. Here you go. It's better be fucking good now. Well, there you go. Um, uh, there we go. Jormus. I mean, I love the. I love the Jormus. I, you know, I've got they've got a special place in my heart. Then uh, I will give that a clap, clap, clap. Yes. <clears throat> Some parts of that soundtrack were pretty avant-garde, but you know, on the whole, not bad. Uh, right. Pick another number. Slap, slap, slap. <laughs> Uh, three keen, three, disc three, disc three, well done. Let's see now. The demo is shorter than the pre-calc, yeah, yeah, this is, I mean, this is, if, if you're at that level, it's, no. Peter Mackey, good evening fellow Amiga dweebs. Well, you're in good company here. This sounds like it's also short, 40k, 64k. It's finished loading. It's obviously decrunching.
Hang on. Okay, now it's doing something. It's doing something. So to check, you know. There we go. calling it i tell you i'm gonna have a word with uh uh dodge when i next see him and tell him to put some endings on his demos just finish the damn things man come on <laughs> anyway that was great uh moods plateau from revision 2011 i haven't asked ttd yet you can't be putting numbers in the chat yet it's just a fade to black you know yeah, fade to black, uh, fade out the music. Just qu quit back, will you? Come on. Hang on. 
It's doing important business. There we go. Uh, okay, right. Now I want a number. Oh yeah, you're not allowed to see the numbers today, are you? TTD. Ah, oh, there we go. Well done. Right. Uh, we'll do this as the last one for now. I've got two more discs left. Which means you should be able to work out what the numbers are. That's providing this one works. There was a couple of other uh, OCS devils that I picked up, but they were like... They were bigger than the discs, so that wasn't going to happen. Scroll text is too slow. Uh, where are we? Oh, chip mem as well. Look at that. Uh, complex. There we go. Let's see if we can just... Uh, there we go. About there. We do. Uh, so before we go... So scroll text... Uh, uh, oh, there we go. We just doxed them. There we go. Clip arts. You want to send uh, title pics and clip arts? Oh, yeah. There we go. And include fifty dollars in your letter. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it was a different time, wasn't it? It was a different time. There we go. Uh right, so let's get on to business. Uh NOS N so far. N S O F R N S O F R is what I'm gonna thanks for the follow, mate. Uh, that's like 80 euros now, yeah, it's quite a lot, isn't it? Um, what do I want? I want a uh, desktop. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the current state of play with the music disc. So let's, uh, let's show you where we were last week. Just a little reminder. So this is where we were last week. Just trying to pixel plot that waveform and getting half of it right but not the other half right <clears throat> so uh, it's more than four for actually how many dots is that that would be um, six I'll tell you how many dots I am plotting it'd be 640 times four so 
2,560 dots that I'm actually uh, plotting, but not at the same time, so... <coughs> um, actually, it's only... Um, <laughs> it's actually only uh, 16 dots every so many frames, but there we go. They're just not, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm diluting the issue. Right, okay. I'm going to pause that. I'm going to do that. And this is... This is this is where we currently stand. Pay attention. There you go. <laughs> Daniel Collins, it must be AI. Yeah, I can assure you it's not AI. Uh, Rob Smith, I thought it was stereo waveforms and you remembered. Yeah, it's not stereo waveforms. So yeah, there you go. That's um, a lot of it's there now. We've got a nice little transition system. We've got two waveforms. Um, uh, kind of need to fix uh, kerning on hyperbase. No. <laughs> um, kerning. 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 Oh, are you off, Mitch? No worries, mate. Kemming. Yeah, maybe some kemming, yeah. Oh, it's still loading as well. We can go back to the debug screen. It tells us what's going on. I don't think it's going to load anything else, though. Gwen, welcome in, mate. Bit wise, what are you doing there, mate? Any seven, R. There you go. That's what it currently looks like. Uh, so, Gwen, welcome in. I saw you doing a uh, uh, AY maximizer. I'm gonna have to play with that again at some point. Uh, Axi, is that? Yes, it is, because this is a pro track of music disc. So yeah, yes, this getting there, man. We're nearly there. Hey Tinker, how you doing? Gwem as well. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of this is about where we are at the moment. So we're going to run through um, how we've gone from uh, this last week to this this week. Uh, just discussing AI in demos. You can get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 
Stop stealing other people's content. You wouldn't rip a fucking module from someone else, so why would you use an AI bloody system, a large language model, to use creative content to pass it off as your own? It's not yours. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't steal a module, so why would you steal graphics from millions of people on the internet all at the same time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we did rip modules all the time, but then you'd be called lame. And then on the Poe comments, you say, well, that's a ripped tune, isn't it? So. Um, you wouldn't steal a game. I mean, we don't steal games. We, uh, we examine the uh, copy protection mechanisms. That's what we do on this channel. It's very different. Very different. Um, uh, so, yeah, I just want to test something out as well with this, because... Um, uh, any seven, I I noticed a lot of my samples that I took were appeared in loads of other modules, in fast tracker tunes as well, all over the place. But you know, I stole them from someone else. You can steal them from me. I just want to test something. So I want it to start loading. Then I'm going to eject the disc and see what happens. Wait for it. Okay, discs out, still playing. Hear that? The sample's not loaded. Put the disc back in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe it's not that resilient. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh... Yeah, all right, well, it's not, okay. I mean, you shouldn't take the disc out anyway, right? So. <laughs> Thank you, Tinker. <laughs> all right, so let me explain what's going on with that thing, Mike. Uh, I'll be interested to see how uh, WinUAE handles it. Actually, it shouldn't be too, too bad because um, we load all the samples sequentially off of the disc, so we hardly ever move. Zero, mate. Oh, thank you so much, man. Kindergarten kitten, uh, Brit Fury, that's a cool name. Quarry man and the bread, or te bread, and RGB812, give Zero on a big uh, hug. He's gifted you a sub. Thank you, mate. Um, uh, will that Fred again remix be on the music disc? No, it will not. That's mine. That's that's mine. It's uh it's for these, right? So we'll just do this quick before we uh, get onto uh, actual coding and stuff. So as you know, I have a bit of a thing for where is where is the button? There we go. I like using these, my six hundreds for DJing on, right? I've got three of them now, um, and I use these things here these little screens, right? Um, and I've been blue tacking them to, to the back, uh, to the to the top here so that I can see what I'm doing. Well, I had a little word with Retro32 and he designed this, which is a 3D print mount for the screen, right? So effectively what you have is it clips into the back of the screen like that and then as if by magic, if I pick the right Amiga. <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> uh, Low Polysaurus, do I have a link for those screens? Um, uh, if you just search for seven inch, you just do a search for this, uh, seven inch uh, TFT screen, you'll see them. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's an Amazon link. You can get them on eBay, you know, with like three, four weeks delivery as well, half the price if you want to wait for them. So, so, uh, but yeah, what we did find was two of the Amigas, the uh, the brackets fit, and one of my 600s, the grills are slightly further apart for some reason. So uh, yeah. Oh, any seven. Now, now, I agree with that. If you're creating a large language model out of all of your own content, 
then fine. That's your content. But the fact that it's scouring the internet and uh, stealing everything from everywhere. Uh, power from 12 volts and takes composite video. I'll tell you what else I picked up this week. Which is absolutely handy. Is this a 12 volt barrel jack, USB to barrel jack cable, which now powers the screens. Scraping oneself, yes I know. So that's handy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tested it, works fine. The screens are like dirt cheap anyway. <laughs> Worked for the fragments. <laughs> right then. So, let's get rid of that then. So, what happened last week then? Right, so, um, in terms of the actual code, a lot, right? Just fucking loads of stuff. I had a very busy weekend. What I did discover, um, which some people may, may not be interested in, there's a technique you can do with a blitter called um, uh, vertical filling. Um, so you can basically put a bunch of dots and then fill them vertically rather than horizontally. So the blitter does it automatically. It can do it out of the box horizontally. But when you want to fill a waveform when you're printing it up you know, from top to bottom, you want to do it horizontally, sorry, vertically. Um, and if you do that with one width, one word width, and then try and fill it down, it completely screws up. So you have to use two words. Um, and I spent most of my Saturday wondering why it wasn't working uh, until I found a post on the EAB that said, that's why that doesn't work. So, so yeah. Oh my God, that's that's the funky blip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what we will do actually, because this would be good actually. Uh, let's pull this up. Oh, actually, I tell you what I will need to do first. I need to fix the disk first. So configurations. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's get the disk in the drive. Uh, test.adf, yep, that's fine. Okay, uh, retract 0, 1, 3, 1, 2, 4, yep. Boot check 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, yep. Write that back to the disk, excellent. Right. So let's just pause that a sec. And let's get Koppenheimer up. There we go, beautiful. Okay. Let's also stop that Amiga from clicking away. Uh, and then we go slash code slash mod mix asm slash data slash test.adf, which will need to be renamed at some point. Let's put that in drive zero. And then let's go and have a look, shall we? And let's get this uh, right. It will be maybe that width, won't it? Come on, let's get the screen up. Gone too far. Oh, let's uh, switch. Oh, I can't switch the screen in here, can I? Because the help key doesn't work. Lasso, if you're there, mate, the help key doesn't work. Uh, give me a guess. Oh, that's no good. Okay. There you go. You can see our waveform now. Yeah, the problem is I'm not on the right screen, I, and I can't uh, I can't switch the screen because the help key is not um, set up on this for some reason. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, so here is basically one of the waveforms being played. So what it's basically doing is it's rolling across. It's doing that, um, I don't know if you know what this is, it's a method called corkscrew, where um, you can do horizontal, continuous horizontal scrolling. Um, but you obviously have to, the amount of RAM that you need is basically uh, one pixel line width, uh, one pixel line height across your total width. So you can see it's like clearing it and drawing it and filling it and you see the second waveform down here. You see it nice, just going lovely. 
Uh, is yellow flickering at the top show disc access? No, the yellow flicker in the top um just uh, it's um, my raster time checker for the waveform renderer. It's it's well outside the boundaries of anything that's going to be a problem. So, um, so where's the rest of the screen then? Leave it down. Oh, I see. I've really arranged this oddly. Oh, I know why. That's um, that's interleaved, isn't it? That's why. There you go. So you can see the rest of the screen there now. Uh, but you can see most of it anyway. There you go. But there's not much going on there. Oh, that's... Is that fast round, is it? I was just scripts all the way through. Oh, I have, yeah. There you go. There you go. I do love watching that, though. I literally just watch that rendering for ages. Um, uh, the graph dots are drawn with the CPU. Yes, Minimo. Yeah, exactly right. Um, and I had to optimise those because it was taking a lot of time. Uh, so you're scrolling with BPLCOM1 instead of shifting data. Exactly, yeah. Because you don't want to, I mean, there's a lot of data to shift. It's, um, because of course we're in high res and interlace, right? So it's uh, 80 bytes across for one bit plane. We've actually got two. Um, and each waveform is actually 66 pixels high. So we'd have to shift um, 10K of data every frame if we were doing it with a blitter. And there's two waveforms. So you don't want to shift 20k of data per frame. So throw throw memory at it. So um, so yeah, that's basically uh, in Copenheimer. It's just nice to see it there, isn't it? Uh, tell you what else you can see in here is you can see it loading stuff. Still about there. Uh, can we reset this? Reset. So clean memory. Oh, that's loading up the uh, main XE. Here we go. Now it's loading samples. There you go. See? That's sample data being loaded. You see that matches that, that pattern there. So it'd be big shifts. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, right bit wise. It's, it's not wise. I realise what I've done there. There you go. It's just loading another sample. I imagine the next one's going to go around here. Because that'll be the next available slot. There we go. It's loading another sample. Anyway, you get the idea. You get the idea. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah. So, the next thing to, to tackle, right, is uh, how do you actually do a mix, right? Because I've got two protractor tunes. Um, <laughs> so, you can listen to Infinite Berlin Warehouse. Thank you, Hooperphonic. So. This is where stuff actually, I didn't realize how complicated this is going to be. But let me show you how many modules uh, this requires, right? So if I go to data, in here you'll find I've got, I've got two modules, right? So in the data folder, I've got what I call the mix modules, right? And so I just, uh, for this, I've I prepped up uh, two, two quick tests, effectively, right? Just something where it plays a tune for a bit and then mixes into the next one because I don't want to have to wait three minutes to test the, the transformation bit, right? I don't want to wait for that. So I did like an edit. So it's just a pro tracker module, right? To get here. And this channel here is where the elements from the other tune start coming in. So that's from the second tune. Hey Vampire, how you doing? There's another element for the second tune. Parts here fading out from the uh, original tune as well. And it gets to this pattern here. And then it just starts playing this one. So that's it. In terms of how the music disc uh, manages it, it's, that's how it does it, right? It's basically just a string of Pro Tracker modules 
that are combined into a massive module. All the samples are de-duped. Everything's optimized. It's compressed to crap and, and the rest of it. What that doesn't help us with is the waveforms, right? Because what you'd end up having is just one waveform and then the next waveform. What that doesn't show is the transitional period, right? Well, I am, in a way, Subby. It's just they're copied from certain parts, all right? Um, if you want me to, we can just set up two Amigas. Um, so, that's the actual mix part portion of it, right? Uh, here is the... Um, Here's the waveform part portion of it, right? So if I go 01.mod and we go to that same mix point there. You notice that other tune's not in it now. Kick's gonna start to fade out. Uh, Bitwise, it essentially is. So that's it's here how that one fades out, but the other two doesn't come in. Uh, I expect it was one more tailing to the other. Exactly how you do it. Right, so that's that. And then, of course, on this one, this one has the additional patterns for the overlap section. So it starts off... Basically like Jesus on Ease does, but better. And it's pattern four, I think, when this takes over. When the kick comes in, that's when the switch is. There. <clears throat> so as you can imagine, uh, when we actually compile all 10 or so tracks, depending on who finishes theirs uh, within the allotted uh, time frame, um, there is actually quite a lot of manual work to do to make this thing actually represent itself like a DJ mix. Um, it's a lot easier just firing up two Amigas and just doing it by hand. It's, that's much better. But um, as you can see there, um, did you pull the tracks into Ableton and make the entire mix then bounce out parts? No. I, I tell you what I do is uh, is I do this, right? So I will load, uh, let's just get another Pro Tracker up, for example. Yeah, there we go. And then what I do is effectively just go uh, mods uh, and I would load, uh, I would load uh, based2.mod, that's not right. Uh, base.mod, I would load that one. I'd get near the end. And the other thing I do here, actually, just, just as a quick check, is just to go Berlin Warehouse dot mod. Where's that? Berlin Warehouse? Or is that just, is that mod dot still? Okay. So what you can do here, because you've got two copies of Pro Tracker open. <laughs> Glazed. Oh, uh, yeah. So if I just leave that run out, that should actually just go. But you see, if you obviously you need to, you know, I wouldn't just leave those to roll out. I would actually go, and if I was actually mixing them properly, I would, you know, I'd play with some levels, I'd do some edits and stuff. So, you know, it's about... That's, that's the whole point of a mix, right? You don't just let one go you have to smooth those edges and make that transition happen so is there some phasing going on uh no i don't think so um hands off mixing did that with bpm studio and very late night parties a lot <laughs> excellent <laughs> um so yeah that's basically the process um Obviously, the final uh, set of tunes... Let's get some background music in a minute. The final set of tunes hasn't been determined yet. Um, so, 
I'm not going to spend time handcrafting all that stuff if stuff isn't finished um, and the rest of it. So the I think the idea is, I think we've got a date of, oh yeah, so it's in, in 11 days, the tunes have to be finished. If your tune's not finished, it's not getting on the music disc. So, um, uh, not enough CPU and or audio channels to play two at the same time, not without some de degradation in quality. Um, and, and why? Why bother, you know? Um, Subby, if you could do, uh, what's the size limit? Um, but see, now that's another interest. So that's two interesting questions. One, um, yes, but maybe not for this volume. It depends on who finishes um, and how much disk space we've got, right? Uh, what's the size limit? Again, that also depends on memory and um, uh, disk space, right? And they're all very variable factors. It's hard for me to, I can't just tell you, you can have 300K of samples. You could have 200k samples. You could potentially have about 400k samples, but you know, uh, 880k mod is never going to happen on this. So <laughs> you didn't say you'd do 187. Don't worry, I've never asked. Um, but for this, um, it's a techno music disc, so it has to be techno, and it has to be 133 BPM. You can't just throw some DOS pop in there at 100, uh, uh, you know, or some drum and bass at 170. It's just not going to fit. So, uh, how many floppies? One. Just doing one disc. It means I don't have to worry about uh, disc change code and the rest of it. But we've got quite a lot of tunes. We've got 10 tunes on there already at the moment, um, although they ain't finished. So, <clears throat> so yeah, that's kind of that's where that is. So, my plan today. Subby, no, I'm not implying you can't do techno. I just don't want you to waste your time doing something else that, that I just say, well, it's not going to fit. <laughs> uh, do you use a classic uh, sound tracker? Well, no one uses sound tracker. That's, um, that's awful. But I do use Pro Tracker to write my tunes. Yeah. Um, people like Subby use Milky Tracker. Um, other people use Open MPT. I don't care what you use. Use what you're comfortable with. I only use Pro Tracker because uh, um, I just I know the shortcuts, um, and I know if it's um, if it's playing correctly in that, it will play correctly in the music disc. So. Uh, yeah, Commander King, you can't have uh, Pro Tracker doesn't have a decimal place for that BPM. So. Uh, and, and I'm sure that's going to make someone say, well, if I just flip between those two BPMs very quickly, then it'll be 1.33.7. But anyway. Um, uh, champ, AR finished? No, is it Ek? Um, uh, we might have a look at it later, but no, it's nowhere near finished. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the standard is the Protractor source code, yeah. Uh, Glazed, uh, Doc did a version of Soundtrack with Scrawly Message on it, uh, and it was my workhorse back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, I just use this because I, I know it's I know it's solid. I've lost all of my windows by shaking that, haven't I? Where is, uh, where's that? There we go, I can see everyone now. Great. Um, so... <clears throat> Uh, what do we actually want to do then? So what I tell you what I want to do. Let's just fire this up. Oh yeah, th this is actually there is something else that's quite important on this, right? Uh, right. You may not have noticed this. <laughs> Subby found twenty bugs just in that call. That's what usually happens, isn't it? I realised that I'm playing all of the tunes. Uh, on XM play in the background at the same time as well. I realise this. Okay. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Bear with me a moment. 
Right, let's get that up. Okay, just got to overwrite the disk because it's booting the disk rather than booting the code at the minute. So give us a sec. Uh, it missed loads of stuff. Uh, we talked about Sound Tracker versus uh, Pro Tracker. Pro Tracker's got a sample editor. Basically, it's 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 heaviest hitter of a feature, um, and a built-in sampler. So you didn't have to leave the tracker to get new samples. You'd already be in there. You'd sample something, you'd edit up, bam, you're off. Um, <clears throat> uh, and loads of effects. And a terrible, terrible code base. But, you know, let's not get uh, upset about that. Because I could talk too long about that. Um, <clears throat> Zeron's correct. Yeah, Pro Tracker is for professionals, obviously. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> so, something you may not have noticed. Now, look at that, that text there. Look at what, what's happened. What what are these what are these characters here? These skinny characters. <clears throat> it's almost like it's a proportional font. That's because it is. So uh, right, <clears throat> put that in, and you'll notice it's uh, it's right justified as well to that point that I've. Designated on screen. A oh, 40 can I? Okay, yeah, 40 pixels. See? Pause that. So. <clears throat> oh, Alright, and you want a. Uh, I'll raise your zero on, alright? How about. Uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, what we've also got in here is a uh, uh, I don't think Photon would like this. Uh, too many modern tools used. Oh no, yeah. This is, um, hang on, it's um, tell you what it is. It is Dogma level 1337. That's what it is. There you go. And as you can see, bam, bam, bam. It's over there. It's looking good. This is all great. Um, so, obviously, we can have a little bit of fun with this. Uh, let's just put that back in. Uh, yeah, put that in. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, and then... Uh, where were we? Over here, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that would be... Uh, Font comic and font comic raw. Yeah. <laughs> so of course we we've got comic sans as well, right? Because why wouldn't you have comic sans? I mean, we're obviously never going to use Comic Sans, all right? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a maniac. But you know, just to demonstrate, we've got Comic Sans, right? So, how has this come about? So, uh, zero rod, mate. It's already on the list. Don't worry. It, it's it's. Uh... <laughs> Don't get me started. Right. So, there is a tool that. Um... Um, Iridon put me onto called uh, BM Font. Now, um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this before. Uh, but basically, you can pick any uh, true type font, right? Uh, let's go font settings. Let's just grab something at random. Uh, 
I think, can someone name me a font that they, they want to see? Terminal. No, come on. <laughs> Wingdings. Impact. No, impact. Impact has to be done. Right, impact. Right, let's go for impact, right? Uh, I'm going to set the size to 40, right? Okay, and then let's just visualize that. Visualize. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Look at it go. It's quite tight together, isn't it? But anyway, we'll go with that. Well, let's just test it out anyway. So I can save that as um, C slash code slash assets. I know, mod mix asm. Yep. Uh, assets. It's all very, it's a bit like, you know, test impact. I've, it's all a bit flaky and bits and pieces everywhere. Let's just visualize that again. Everything's in the one screen. That's good. Right. So we come over to my C sharp project for this music disc. Um, uh, and then where's the font stuff? Wave gen. Oh no, that's a set. Did I put that in a separate project? Recent projects and solutions. BM font. Okay, yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. So we just go uh, make font impact. I'm going to disable those because I don't want those changing any data. Okay, and we should now have uh, in the folder dm uh, c colon slash code slash mod mix asm uh, assets fonts test. I know this is what happens. So in here now we should have. Uh, impact.asm and then impact.raw okay and then if I just go to the code uh, and let's just go uh, we'll do, uh, actually let's call it impact impact so there's the impact.asm oh whoops yeah and then dot raw okay font impact I mean, I could automate this a little bit easier, but it's not often you change fonts, so impact, right? Okay. Then if we go to our UI test print, font impact, and then font impact raw, and then let's let's test it. Let's see what happens. <coughs> Does it work? There you go. So I've just imported uh, impact font from a TTF in a single bit plane into my uh, into my code into my system. So <laughs> this is so handy. Uh, kerning, I don't do kerning. Um, it does X advance, so it, it knows how far it's supposed to go to the next um, um, uh, character. So, although the character might be so many pixels wide, it moves forward based on whatever metadata is in there. So, if we look at um, here, I'll show you what uh, what data I get in here. Right, so. Uh, C slash code mod mix assets font uh, test and then if we look at um, uh, impact.fnt right so I get this big chunk of XML here uh, it's got a height a width um, where it is in the bitmap um, I only pick and then the next advance how many X how many pixels Hit in bed, no worries, Waterman. Thanks for tuning in, mate. How many uh, X uh, pixels you're supposed to advance per per that character? Um, if there's missing characters in here, we skip those. So what happens is we take that XML, and then what we do is we output um, this, which is just enough information um, that we need to basically recreate that. 
XML the JSON for pros. We, no, we don't. We, we don't argue about which language is best here, do we? So, <clears throat> so. <laughs> um, so yeah. So basically, this spits out. Um, uh, this uh, basically goes through the whole font. It rips out each character. It aligns them uh, the start the character to 16 pixels because it makes it a lot easier to blit it onto screen. Um, it also, um, if the character in question has uh, a white space at the top and bottom, it also shrinks those and adds a, a Y offset so it prints the character at the right place, meaning it saves memory. Um, yeah, I really like this. It's really handy. I'm going to be using this for the rest of my life, I think. I love it. Um, so yeah, a proper full proportional font printer. I mean, what's not to love? So, so my plan today um, is to have a look at, we're gonna switch back, we're gonna switch back the font to the small and big. Um, and I wanna do uh, an artist and track title um, print function that will kind of print them off screen and then blit them on like sliding them onto screen so I want to move them about and stuff um, so yeah um, we will pause that Where's that uh, I'm going to have a very quick break because the wife's out so I don't need to make any tea so this won't take very long I just need to get some replenishments and then I'll be back in a moment um, just make an unreadable scroller yes curl right uh, imploder right uh, no tea imploder <laughs> any percent speed run <laughs> right, back in a bit.
Hello. Right, there was one thing I wanted to do first, actually. Um, let me just forward this on. Right, so before we get on to the business of, of trying to muck about with this font stuff, uh, so you saw in the background. Actually, let's, let's just actually let's let's, uh, let's fast forward it first, actually. Okay, ba 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 ba. About here. So where does the background switch out? Just want to demonstrate something there. Ah, here we go. Right, so let's just pause that again. Uh, and then... So if you look at the background that's moving about, you notice how it's kind of, it's kind of randomly picking squares for it to replace with the other, with the other background. And it's also timed for the exact time frame between the mix as well. So when the mix finishes, every last square should have been replaced. Bam. And there you go. Apart from one. See that one there? That one's not been replaced. I'm not sure why that is. So, so that's, that's, that's that. But how that works is... You'll see in here, uh, data, blocks.asm. I've basically got a predetermined list of, uh, of 16 by 16 blocks, the coordinate of 16 by 16. It's off by one somewhere, but I added two to it earlier and it still wasn't clearing it out, so I'm not sure why it's not clearing the bloody thing. Oh! I think I might know why. Maybe I don't. But yeah, as you can see, we've got quite a lot of... Um, coordinates here and actually we don't need an xy coordinate because what this does let's find that come on see what we're doing here is we get the uh ignore all this stuff that calculates the position we're supposed to be in it basically gets the x and y coordinates uh adds the x uh, to itself uh, and then multiplies that by 16 and then multiplies it by the UI byte width, which is 80. And then adds that to the register. So actually, uh, it's always the same. So the coordinates, uh, what's the coordinates for it? So the coordinates are basically just um, uh, the screen split up into 16 by 16 squares. And that's what that list basically pertains to. Uh, where is it? Blocks, 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 blocks. So these are 16 by 16 blocks. So that's uh, four across and 23 down. Uh, how many squares are there? Uh, 640 divided by 16. That's 40. 512 divided by 16. 
32 multiplied by 40. So there's 1,280 squares. <clears throat> but I'm using basically four bytes to describe where a square is. I don't actually need to describe the X and Y. All I need is a memory location of where that graphic is. So <clears throat> let's optimize something. Let's reduce this this uh, this data down a bit, right? Uh, there we go. Right. <clears throat> so as usual, back in the old C sharp, the old trusty. Uh, let's go back to the mod mix project. And you'll see there's something in here called um, Rand Block Gen, right? Not blockchain, block gen. Is there an offset in the memory location? No, there isn't. So that's what I want to switch it to. I don't want to calculate X and Y position. I just want a value that tells me exactly where that block is in memory. As an offset, sorry, from like. So there's your there's your bit plane. I've got one here that you're viewing, one here that we we're basically copying from. The offset from both is exactly the same. So I only need, I don't need an X and Y, I just need a memory location. So that's what we're gonna do with this. So what this does is I've got an X and Y, I've got a width and a height, divided by 16. It adds those into a list of X and Ys in the correct order. It then does a random number generation, randomly picks an item from the list, adds it to a new list, and then removes it from the list. And then basically does that, it's basically, um. Uh, Francis knows this one. It's it's a, a the randomization method known as um, like a card dealer, right? So you got um, 1,280 cards. You shuffle them and then you just deal them out until you've got none left. <clears throat> so what I want to do with this is rather than writing this source code out. Great little algo. I know it's great, isn't it? I love it. So rather than writing out an XY position, what I want to do is um, calc uh, screen offset, right? <clears throat> so um, uh, X is by 16. So var new X is uh, block dot X plus plus, right? Uh, oh, times two, sorry, times two, yeah, okay. Var new y is uh, block y uh, times 16 times 80. And the reason why it's 80 is because it's 80 pixels across. So to get your each line of y is um, is 80, 80 bytes, right? So var offset equals new x plus new y, okay? Oh, hang on a sec. Okay, no, oh, nothing. Uh, nope, nope, she's having fun. Okay, so, sb.append line. In the code, I want tab dc.w slash tab, uh, and then I want uh, a dollar, and then I want uh, offset x4, I think it is. And then we take that out of the equation, then we build that. Okay, and then let's, uh, we've got a breakpoint in the end anyway, good, good. Okay, so that's written now. So now you remember our list was X and Y. <coughs> will 16 bit be enough, Pyro? Yes, it will. Because um, uh, the, the pattern plane that we're talking about is 80 bytes wide uh, by 512 lines. So the maximum value that you could have is, well, that's, I mean, that's if you go there, you're out of range anyway. So yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. Uh, if 16 bit is enough for you, you could probably shift right. Yeah, but you know. Uh, where is it? There. Oh, look at that. 
Beautiful. Right, so. Now to fix the code. And then the end result of this. Uh, so we've got two there at the end. So I mean, it's not power of two. So it's not easy to do shifting, is it? Because it's 80 across. Uh, so where was it in? There? Okay, right, cool. Uh, so rand block list. So we add... We add... We multiply by four, but actually we only need to multiply by two now. So that's good. And then we just need to move Q0 into D0. Move A0 plus into D0. We don't need a byte position. We don't need to multiply. And then actually, we just need to add that long word. And it has to be a long word this time because... Uh, I've got effectively negative numbers in there. And that should be it. We've effectively reduced the amount of memory. Probably not disk space, though. Um, but maybe, I don't know. Curl signing off. Happy coding. Thank you very much for tuning in. Right. The question is, has it worked? Let's just leave it running. Oh, no. Yeah, that all looks correct as well. Still got our off by one error, but um, I'm not going to hunt that one down today. <clears throat> uh, Neversoft, who's this new scene group? It's what's known as a uh, placeholder graphic. Um, everyone else has also noticed that if you read it backwards, it says Wipeout because that was our influence with the graphics. So there are placeholder graphics. Okay. Uh, cool. So, more optimizations. We can delete all this fluff now. Look at that. And there's no loop there anymore. Uh, I know it does that a couple of times, but we could optimize that. Couldn't we? Do we even need to do that anymore? Uh, no, we... We actually don't. Do we? No. No, that's pointless. No, that's pointless. There we go. Look at all those instructions that we've just removed. <coughs> Probably the sister group of uh, ETT, yeah, or 3TT, yeah. Um, uh, let's just double check it again because I've just deleted some stuff. Uh, ran status. Ah, I tell you, that's the other thing I want to do actually. Move one into ran status. Uh, Clear.w ran block count A5. Right, let's just, let's just see. I don't think this is going to help. Let's just let's just give it a try. I don't think that I don't think this is the problem with the last block. I don't want to sit here trying to debug this last block though. But let's just see if that's done anything.
They're still there. So they've got an even number of uh, X and Y coordinates. So that's not the problem, is it? And that one we see on the right is the same one that's on the left anyway. It's just a pixel higher, I think. What is causing that, though? Mm. Retro KB Music, how you doing, mate? Welcome in. Um, we're doing some coding. I don't think... No, I'm, I'm not going to sit here trying to debug that one. I will... I mean, I'm going to fix it because it's... You know, it's already made me cross. Uh, we're talking about LFT again um, because, you know, guys are absolute genius uh, and produced the best uh, 256, 256 byte intro ever made on the C64. So, even numbers, so that's not it, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what we can do. I tell you what we do, that's a super quick check, right? And this is quite good actually. So block rand list. So let's let's see what we'll do. Let's go back to here where we generate our block rand list. And then before we do that, let's just do block rand list end. Right, and let's just run that again. Okay, that's done. So now in our code, I love this is one of my favourite tricks actually. Have you got to the end of your list? So if we go to main, no, UI. This is the point where we check whether we're, we, we're basically at the end of our list based on our calculations, right? So if we go to here, we build and run the thing again. And then run it, put it into turbo mode again. Let's watch it. Oh, shh. No, I, I fucked up. Fucked up. Okay. So, A0. Okay, A0. Uh, exit. LEA. Uh, Rand block list. End into... We'll put it into A4. Fuck it. Right. Run, run, run. And it should start right about there. There we go. Right, so our round block. So our round block count is one two eight zero, which is the correct number. We already worked that out. So it's five hundred in hex. Okay. Okay. So sub Q one from D six. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hang on. Oh, I just found the problem. I don't need to check that there. It's already checked up there. You bloody idiot, Ian. Right. We don't need to check it there. I'm checking it twice. I was going to find out whether it was naughty or nice, but... Okay. This is going to work perfectly this time. I'm not even going to... Just gonna be fine. That little character in the bottom left and bottom right. Oh, here we go. Let's try and experience it for a moment.
Yes! Fucking yes. Okay. That looks perfect. It looks absolutely perfect. Beautiful. I said I wasn't going to fix that, but here we go. I <clears throat> didn't need to. I just stepped through the code and went, oh, yeah, that's why it's broken. Right. Brilliant. We fixed the bug. <laughs> right. Um, I am going to do another very quick BRB because I forgot to pop it to the office. Um, this will be super short. <laughs> Um, I just need to nip today. All right, back in a sec. Bit of uh, X Corp. They tell you it was quick, so uh, there we go. Um, right, so we can get on with text now, can't we? I'll tell you what I will do. Let's just... Um, uh, yeah, let's, let's clean this up a little. No, don't load them. No, don't load these. Don't load them. I don't want to know what's going on there. Thank you. Right. Uh, stage changes. Um, stuff. It's working. There we go. Commits from hell, obviously, but it's my git, not yours. Okay, there we go. Right. That's in now. Good. We've pushed that. We're all good. We're comfy. Hands off my garbage. <laughs> right, so now we need to think about text. Now, this is my plan for this. Um, let me demonstrate quickly. Let's go and switch the font back to uh, the test the test print to um, hyper-based Hoffman Remix. Okay. Right, well, we'll probably fix up the font at some point. Font uh, big, and then font big raw. Font big raw, lovely, yep, okay. <coughs> right, uh, I'll tell you what else we'll do. We'll, we'll do that as a 16 away from the edge. Right, now let's just, uh, let's just have a quick look at it. Okay, and yeah, the edging, we could probably go a bit further over, but I like that so far. Oh, that's the other thing that we get with our uh, new fantastic text printer, right? Is I've got a function here called uh, Megatype Measure, which returns the length 
of your string in pixels. Which you don't, I mean, usually you could just go, well, it's, it's that many pixels, times that by eight, times that by 16. Now this tells me the actual physical pixel width. Megatype measure. I mean, Keen, are you not, are you not aware? Yeah, monospace, but this isn't monospace fonts, is it? So I've got fonts that, I've got characters that are three pixels wide the print with a distance of five pixels around them and stuff so you're fully aware that's never changing we're never we're never correcting that fancy fonts yes typos are essential yeah yeah um so let's let's put that that's all back in place now right so let me demonstrate if we actually use this routine including the measuring Right, let's show you how much uh, uh, raster time this thing uses. Right, and you'll see why we will not, we can get rid of that now. We don't want colors on that. Yeah, we leave all that in. So we're gonna call that text printer every frame now. And then show you how much raster time that is going to be taking no because it's uh it's type i can't i can't do that a jab uh, gfx lib text length determine the raster length of the text data yeah if you're using uh the operating system which we aren't so i want all the chip ram i cannot have an operating system <laughs> Francis, get length of my proportional font what I just made. Perfect. I love it. That is excellent. Uh, let's actually set the right color on that. Right, so you'll see now. <coughs> yeah, you hate Java. That's why you get me to do it, right? Will you look at that? <laughs> right. Okay, so there's a slight, there's like a variance here, right? And we've had this discussion. Java's not evil. It's just stupid, but that's fine. It is a lot. To print every single one of these characters, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Space, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 characters. And we have to print them on two bit planes as well. Um, so yeah, as you can see. Yeah, let's see if we can get a... There you go. So you can see there, right around about there, so there or there, depending, is how much time it's taking to basically print all of that text. So, how do we deal with that? Well, the best thing to do would be to maybe do that over a couple of frames into a buffer. And then do some masking blitz onto the background with uh, an area. Um, uh, any seven, we're going to make those look so much better at some point, but I'm really not looking forward to the copper list that's needed for it. Um, so anyway, that, that was just to prove a point, right? To print out all that text at that font size, every frame is a lot. So we can't be doing that. So what we need to do is print that into a buffer. It's rather nice at the moment. Yeah, the problem is, uh, so this is another thing. I'm not... I can't tell you who's helping me out, but the two backgrounds we've currently got, this is a slight detour, <clears throat> these are physical graphics at the moment. Every single one of these takes 40 kilobytes. So even with compression, we're talking one per tune, um, uncompressed, obviously you're talking you know, 400K, right? Even if you did like, uh, you know, 10% of that, it's still a lot. <laughs> I 
Oh, um. <clears throat> uh, yeah. JC1980. We're way ahead here. That's exactly what's going to happen. And I have a, I have some, I have some help from a good friend of TTE and a regular who's um busy working away at some nice little procedural generation code to generate us some nice tasty backgrounds, some nice variations. Um, so the plan will basically be, um, obviously you'll see, you'll be viewing one. Whilst the tune is playing on its own, we'll slowly render away in fast in slow RAM what the next um, what the next pattern's going to be for whatever the next tune is. That should hopefully be finished after a couple of minutes. At which point, when we do the mix, we then copy that one down in blocks onto chip RAM, sorted, do the switch, tell it to generate the next one, rinse and repeat, <coughs> render in the background. Uh, procedural generation how um, this is why I asked someone else to do it because I I'm not big on that stuff I'm not a shader coder uh, I can't do that kind of stuff yet I'm not that good I can do you a crappy sine wave but that's about it so um, bitwise uh, my chap is um, is coming up with uh, he's shown me a bunch of ideas that he's already got like, he's got the maths for it, so he just needs to convert into a 68,000 assembly and then write up the CPU and everything will be good. Everything is a sign. Yeah, to a degree. Uh, that's pretty much what every small demo does, yeah. <coughs> um, so, anyway, so the plan is um, we're going to cut out a section of graphics. We're going to create ourselves a text buffer, a graphics text buffer, the, the width of the screen, because that will just, it will make everything a lot easier. Um, and then we need to write our text off of screen and then blit it onto screen, but also we need to be able to reposition where that's going to blit. So I think the first port of call will be create a, um, I think we need to create a structure for this thing, right? So we want a, uh, we basically want what's known as a titler, right? So we need um, uh, where the text is, what font we're using, uh, the screen buffer, um, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we probably need to start working on first, right? So let's just think this through. If we go to variable, no, constants, that's where I put them. Const, okay. Yeah. Uh, RS reset, lovely. Let's create a structure then. So we'll call this uh, title underscore. Um, we'll just put, obviously, let's just fill it up, right? So we need a text pointer, which we'll, we'll say that's a long word, right? <coughs> um, uh, I tell you what, we will need. We will need a status, right? In terms of uh, what we're doing, what what state, type def struct, yeah, except not. Uh, hang on, it doesn't store the image. It stores a list of drawing and filling commands to render it. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we've got a status, we've got a text pointer, uh, title underscore, um, we'll call it render buffer PTR because it's a pointer. Okay, uh, title underscore height, we'll do that as a word. So we'll need to know how many pixels high we're dealing with. Um, title underground uh, back buffer to so the background buffer rs.l1 yeah <coughs> um, uh, what else will we need we'll need a um, back y offset and that can be a word that's fine 
Um, uh, do we need? No, we don't need any copper pointers, do we, actually? Because we're going to sort all that out separately. So that's fine. Okay. Uh, we'll just put in title underscore size of. Right? RS.w0. Beautiful. Really like that. Uh, so now... We'll add more to this as we go on. Um, so... Here's a really good question. How tall is our big font at the moment? Um, it tells us in here somewhere. They are... Uh, no, assets, fonts, test. Big.asm, here we go. That's not 128 pixels high. <laughs> That's not right. Okay. So, no. <clears throat> Stream idea. Create a nicer hand. No, I'm not doing that. <clears throat> uh, That's not right. Font height in pixels. That's not right. That's not right. Why is that so high? Okay, it's not taking it from there, is it? Okay, right. Okay, so our converters needs a little bit of... um. Jiggery pokery, doesn't it? And it's not that one. Because currently we're reporting 128 pixels high for every font, and that's no good. So we need to fix that first. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. It's not the height. That's the height of the bitmap that is output from the converter tool. It's not the height of my bitmap. Yes, yeah, source.height. Okay. I'm half tempted. Should we do a little hack, shall we? Let's do a little hack, because I can't be asked. Uh, font def dot chars. It's at chars, because why? At. Shut up. At char zero dot height. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> okay. Let's go regen those. Okay. Brilliant. Go on. Come on. Right. Now let's go and have a look. Thirty nine. There we go. Impact is thirty nine tall. Okay, yeah. Uh, big is twenty four tall. Okay, I thought that was bigger than that, but okay. And then small is fourteen tall. Okay. <clears throat> See now. Uh, we have to, I see there's a conversation that's broken. Uh, scale H. Uh... Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right, Zero Shadow. Yeah, it was just, it was just taking it from the original file. We've optimized the crap out of that. So, But this is just to determine. Um... So the problem is, is that if we change, if we change the size of the font, because we want it to be flexible. Thalamus, mate. Welcome in and thank you for the sub. I hope uh, the um, shipping out of the old... Um... Oh, did you get my T-shirt size? I did email you, but I didn't have an order number. 
because I'm a lazy, greedy musician. So, um, but yeah, I hope you picked that up. I'm not. I'm not in any great hurry. Like everyone else can have their orders first. You know, put me <laughs> low in the queue. I just, I, you know, you got it. Cool, cool, mate. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm not. You know, I'm not in a hurry. I've, I've debugged the thing for them. I've done sound effects for it. I'd rather other people get the game before I do. So. Um, so, our plan here is, if the font size changes, it's going to break everything. So we have to just assume that it's correct, right? So let's go for, okay, so let's make, let's make some space for these, right? So memory chip, okay. So what size are they? We'll call this artist... Artist A. Um, let's put it actually. Let's put it into constants. Let's do that first. So um, we'll do our artist height right equals fourteen at the moment, isn't it? Fourteen. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, and we'll do title underscore track name actually track name underscore height equals uh, build data 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 no assets okay assets um big dot as um twenty four okay. I always do that. Uh, constants. Okay, so the track name is 24 pixels high, right? <clears throat> so, artist uh, plane size equals uh, UI underscore width by times artist height. Yep. That'll tell us how big of a plane size we need. Unless, of course, we print outside of the edges, then we're, we're fucked. But, um, you know, we just need to make sure we don't do that. Track name underscore plane and place, plane underscore size. Again, same thing. It's the height multiplied by. Uh, okay. I did it around the other way last time. Okay. Let's just put it in the same way because, you know, why would you not want that? Uh, equals, yep, lovely. Right, so we've designated the sizes of the plane data. Tinker, sleepy time, mate. Thanks for tuning in. Breaking Hoffman to Van's VIP treatment for Roadcraft order. <laughs> never. I've never pulled rank on anything, I don't think. I just ask nicely. I find that usually works. Vote on, mate. How you doing? Um, right, so. We'll need four buffers. We need two artists and two track title. We've determined the sizes. So let's go and allocate some space. Um, so we'll say artist A. Yeah, DS.B. Artist plain size. And we'll artist B, yep. Artist plane size, and then we want uh, track name A, track name B, uh, and that's track name plane size, and then track name plane size. Right! Yeah, the memory's screwed at the minute, but yeah. Um, okay, so that's fine. So now I want an array of our titlers, right? And then we'll need to set those up as well. So let's go for... Um, let's just make... Let's just say there's four of them, right? The constants... Uh, 
let's, let's not worry about that. Let's go to variables. Yep, lovely. Uh, we'll just call this titles. RS dot B. Uh, title underscore size of times four. Let's just assume that we're not we're not going to suddenly turn this into a three deck mix, are we? We're not going to remove a turntable. So we'll just say the titles are always going to be four. That's fine. I don't mind that. Right. So let's make uh, a new file and save this as titles.asm. Right. Beautiful. Right. Constants to save that as well. Let's get some header shit in here as well somewhere. And there we go. Uh, here we go. Uh, we call this uh, titles manager, right? Titles init. Uh, LEA titles A5 into A0. Uh, move Q4 minus 1 into D7. Yep. Uh, dot init loop. Okay. Actually, no, we don't even want to do that, actually. Do we? I don't know. Uh, the ASCII thing, now that's done. Uh, I suppose you're late to the party, so let's just... um. Let's... Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just run the disc. As soon as you've just joined us. So we're working on a music disc. <laughs> uh, here we go. Let's go back to... Commander Keen's trying to make a joke. I can see that. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm actually going to disappear whilst we, we just watch it again. Even with the bug that we fixed. There you go. That is that is the music disc in its essence, right there. It's basically a DJ mix. Retro gaming music, nice transition. Thank you very much. That is the that is the whole purpose of this thing. Is basically it's it's uh it's uh it's a music disc. It's like a DJ mix on on a single floppy disc. Um, and you get waveforms. Um, it's very good, my man. Thank you very much <laughs> to show off. Uh, Pyro, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Retro Gaming Music. 
Yeah, yeah. There's a there's there's a lot still to do. Like there's placeholder graphics. It's visually more entertaining than Jesus on East too. <laughs> and do you know the other thing we don't have, which I'm not going to add. Can anyone guess the one thing that would be missing from a music disc that I'm not going to put in? I'm curious. Does anyone know? Askia, stereo mode, no. Jesus, no. An optional disable autoplay, no. Visualizers, no, no, they're coming. Equalizer buzzers, they, they are coming. Time, no. No one's, no, Rolf Harris, no. Definitely, no, no, there's no pudding, no. A menu, that might happen. It depends on whether we've got. Hooverphonic's got it. Hooverphonic. There you go. <laughs> Virgil. <laughs> He's in the Discord. So, no scroller, no scroller, no, not having one. Literally, it's the first thing on the list. No, I don't want a scroller in it. We've got two scrolling waveforms. You don't want to read text, you want to look at the form of the music instead. <laughs> Scrollers are so 1989. I mean, they're so 2024 as well, if you're on the season before, but, you know. I do, you know, I do love 1989, but at the same time, you know, like, that's that's the first, that's the first way to know. The way for, exactly, Spec, Spectrumster's got it exactly right. The, um, muting and soloing, soloing channels. No, that's what pt 1210s for. A real music crew should just look at the waveform. With the volume turned down. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not putting in a sign scroller. No way. That'd be... Uh, no. No. It depends. We'll, we'll see how much disk space we've got. We might put a hidden part in it. Might do. I don't know. <laughs> Zero. I like that idea. There is no scroller. Just runs past once. And then... Maybe. We'll, we'll think about that. Uh, right, so we're making a titles manager, right? So our titles in there. Um, uh, let's do... Okay, so they'll all be initialized at zero anyway for the status. So let's just um, move dot long word um, track name a. Is that a is that is that a plain data? I should have called that. Oh, fuck it, that'll do. We'll just do that. Move that into the. Um, Track underscore. Well, oh title isn't it? Title underscore. That's it. Um, render buffer pointer into a zero. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So that's just let's let's just do a basic in it. Let's just do one step at a time. Right. Um, oh, and actually, we'll move dot long word um, test text test string into text uh, title underscore text point uh, comma uh, a, into a zero okay so we've now got a pointer for the text okay so uh, titles process right move dot w title underscore status a zero okay yeah, yeah this is uh, a0 equals titles struct, right? Lovely. Um, entities, uh, yeah, and then we'll just do a jump index index uh, entity zero 
Jump index D0. Brilliant. And let's make an index table, right? Basically a jump table. Okay. Why is that capital? I don't want a capital. Thank you. Um, DC.w titles underscore uh, titles uh, null. Right. Do nothing. Minus dot i, yep. Titles null basically just sits there and waits for something to do. Does nothing. So we just run all four of them, it won't matter. A troller. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Uh, Pyro, uh, yeah, auto completion mostly. Um, the best thing that it's really good at is um, perpetuating my typos throughout the rest of my code. And there are a lot of them, as you've seen. So, uh, so let's do another one, which is titles type, right? Minus dot i. Right, so in titles type, right, just going to put an RTS in this one as well, but this one will uh, uh, print a rude, uh, an arbitrary, wow, I spelt that right, uh, number of chars into the buffer. I probably, we also need to clear the buffer, don't we? Of course there is. I'm not going to fix it now. Okay. Um, how many? Who knows? Who knows? Right. Do nothing. Beautiful. Right. Okay. This is our initialization. Track name, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And um, we've got a title render buffer point now. Right. So, oh, that's the other thing we need to know, isn't it? As well, isn't it? So, we need a. Um, uh, where's constants? There we go. Yeah. Okay. So, we need um, title underscore uh, font meta rs.l so we'll need a pointer for the metadata for the font and we'll need uh, font raw which will be rs.l1 okay which will be the binary data of the font so in here we'll need to move dot long word uh, font big into uh, title underscore font meta a zero and then move dot long word font big raw to title underscore font raw font raw there we go a zero okay right so <clears throat> yeah that won't build anyway so don't worry Okay, so let's get that into here somewhere. No, that's data, 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 data. Okay, uh, include uh, titles.asm. There we go. Does it build? I mean, it does nothing at the moment, but yeah, it does build. Okay. Okay, so in terms of titles... Let's tidy this up. Oh, I could have left that one there actually. And that one. Let's get rid of the mix manager and the macros and all that kind of stuff. Right, so we need to call that during initialization anyway, don't we? That's important. Um doesn't really matter where we do it, but there we go. Okay, that's what we'll do, just to make sure we haven't gone mental. Such a good tune, this one. Where's it gone? Uh, 
Oh, that's... What the hell is it? I've got music coming from somewhere. Um, and it's actually disappeared. <laughs> Fuck knows. All right, well, that's that's there. Okay, let's just check. Okay, so we've got titles in A0. Track name A, yeah. Test string, font big, font raw. Okay, cool. Um... Uh, titles, okay, okay, font, yeah, yeah, so we actually need to call this each frame as well, don't we, uh, which is here, uh, oh yeah, we need to take that out as well, don't we, uh, LEA, no, uh, yep, yeah. uh, titles, A5 into A0, Okay, BSR titles process. There we go. Right. Uh, Thalamus, um, there's no such thing as a dumb question. So, shoot. Unless, of course, it is when you're doing a, a C64 remix album. waiting for this question now. Where's my freaking player gone? That's bugging me. <laughs> uh, in that demo you played, uh, when you see the waveform of the sound, uh, does the data actually look like that? Or do you interpret, it, interpret the data in a specific way? That's a really good question. Um, and we can cover that because this is going to be... I think I'll probably need to not be on stream and get a deep dive onto that. I will show you how that happens, right? So what happens is... Um, <clears throat> why was the Spectrum <laughs> Miles of Head the ST? Um, because of the number of years it was out. That's why. Um... So, let, let's demonstrate this one in case you, you missed this. Right, so let's just close this up again. So, what I have is basically another module here, another ProTracker module here called 01.mod, right? Which does not contain the mix that you see on screen. It's just the tune on its own with all of the stuff being fading in and out. So, let's get that up. So, 01 here. Let me skip to pattern here. Let me just... Hang on, where the fuck's the music coming from? Hang on. There it is. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, it's the, the interface has disappeared. See how this just fades out. Right? So that's that. So what we do is we render that as audio. This is kind of what we were working on last week. So we render that that song, that whole tune out as as uh, back with the regular behaviour. Oh God, what's going on here? That's massive. Let me just... Whoosh, whoosh, there we go. Uh, a bit more. Yeah, there we go. 
Let's get rid of that. So we render that whole ProTracker module out uh, into a WAV here. And you'll see it here. So we normalize this and everything as well. That's where that kick's fading out there, you see? And the bass is fading out slightly. Um, so, once you've got that, what we then do is put it through some code that we wrote last week. And then that produces, um, over a certain period of samples, um, uh, an average of the samples uh, in a positive manner. So what we end up with after that is this data here. I'll show you it in HXD, for example. Um, here we go. Uh, a smoothed out version. Yeah, a version that is, we'll show you how big it is. It's quite big, but it does compress quite nicely. Um, and it might still take up too much disk space. So we might have to interpolate it and stuff. But if we go to uh, assets, waveforms, 01.bin, what you have here is a pair of uh, four bit values, right? And that basically, that is the waveform that appears on screen. And that's it. So basically that's saying uh, uh, the waveform is uh, uh, six, High six high six high three four two one 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 two eight 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 six uh, five and four so there, it's like separate nibbles um, and then we multiply that by two and then we put another waveform uh, at the smaller size and then draw that overlapped on itself so it looks cool and stuff so yeah so it's basically it's completely faking it. <coughs> um, then sync it with the audio during playback. Yeah, and the way that sync happens is um, the way we've calculated our um, averaging of the samples in this data is uh, per um, music frame. So we know that it takes that many samples to, to play a beat or a bar or whatever. Um, and then we use a nice big double value um 64 bit value to determine how far we're supposed to be and then take those samples out of the thing average them out and then get a nice little a little uh four bit value out of it so that's how all that works basically mm -hmm. um so this is another interesting thing about this actually um so if you watch this it's gonna might be quite hard on stream but let's let's just pull it up again um it shouldn't crash because the title stuff doesn't really do anything at the minute. <clears throat> Open room X, Y, Z. Yes, very much so. So, so you have to be very, you have to watch it really carefully, right? So what you would usually expect, this shouldn't crash. Uh, yeah. Open room M, uh, X, Y, Z. Yes, I've been a DJ for, um, 20, 30 years now so um so uh so yeah so if you watch the waveform what you'll notice is that every now and then it will shift by like two pixels in fact we can really show it i mean the ant the um uh interlay stuff will will show itself really quite badly when you reduce it down this slow so if you just watch how it moves, and then every now and then you'll see that little flick. Pull that up. Let's just make that a bit bigger. I right, see so it's like pixel, 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 pixel. Oh, and then pixel, 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 pixel. And you see a little jump. See where it's like it's moved two pixels. There. It's hard to see, but. Uh, tonight he's a coder, yeah. <laughs> you see that, that switch where it suddenly jumps? Um, that's obviously because uh, the refresh rate of the screen is 50 hertz, but we're, the, the music's running at 120. It's not a rounding error. Life in the Bavarian forest was boring. The big event was me and Ronnie Rabbit watching a leaf fall down. A leaf? I saw a leaf! 
Then one day, I discovered Hofmeister Lager with a picture of my grandpa on it. It had a cool cut on the back of the throat that was so good, I decided to leave the forest. And so I found companionship. Trouble 24 to finish you to chalk. I found the left-hand screw to kiss onto the pink. I found more companionship. But most of all, I found Hofmeister on draft. The moral is, if you want poetry, stand and stare. But if you want great lager, follow the bear. Hey. Hofmeister, a great lager, follow the bear. There you go. <laughs> Someone finally found the new redeem. <laughs> oh, that's going to mean nothing to anyone unless you're in the UK and you're 47 years old. So... Or older. Um, uh, I know I've got no background music now. I'm so glad I saw that. <laughs> does that bring you back some memories there, Retro Hitch? It definitely does for me. Uh, right in the childhood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, let me bring up my XM play again. Oh, it's here, isn't it? Mm, there. There we go. Uh... Bam, down there, there we go. Right, don't crash this time. <clears throat> um, hey, Prince Face, how you doing, mate? <laughs> it's like time traveling, yeah, yeah. Um, My eyes, the goggles do nothing. Um, yeah, the fact that the V-Blank isn't exactly 50 hertz, I mean, it makes no difference because the CIA timer is faster than that anyway. Um, so you'll always get like a click. Um, I suppose I've got one extra pixel of depth at the moment, but I might lose that soon. So um, um, if you've ever watched Tractor running, like Native Instruments, Professional DJ software, tractor running on a, a MacBook or, a, you know, any screen. You'll notice that that waveform is moving quite smoothly, but judders. Because there is still, like, even though that has, like, an infinite amount of more detail that it can shift it to, you'll always get that, that flick. Reminded me of tractor. Exactly. Yeah, Thalamus. You just, you won't... Oh, the Guinness, that's... Oh, we might have to add those in, any seven. That's a good call. Uh, yeah, sub... I'm not... Yeah, no. So, um... Uh... Well, effectively, the audio clock is... Is and isn't... Oh, no, it's, it's one-tenth, isn't it? So, the other clock that we're using... But yeah, it's you just there's you're not going to get away with it. And the only way to get away with it is to make the um <laughs> very good thalamus. So yeah, you'll never get it 100% exact. So you might as well just move it every frame. Uh, and DJ software requires knowledge of uh, assembly to operate. I mean, it doesn't, but you know. It would appear that DJ software and DJ hardware doesn't require any intelligence to operate in this day and age, but you know. <clears throat> but yeah, the way to um, the way to get around it is to basically make sure that your music runs on the frame. Um, so um, circumvent every way, way too rude. Logic OS, all the demos that I've done, run on the on the on the beam. Which means your synchronization and your frame counts are always solid, but in this instance we're 133 BPM, so it's going to be it's going to you get like I don't know what the um, frame difference is, but it's like one point something something. So uh, zero now. If the space above and below, I've I've got plans for so uh, right. Anyway, so where were we? Oh, we're half an hour left. Okay, so... 
Oh, any seven. I wish just have you still got a copy of that set? Because it was fantastic. Uh, on the beam, can you read the raster on the Amiga? Thalamus. The whole thing is linked. It's basically, I read somewhere today. Yeah, drop a linky, mate. That'd be great. Um, the whole, the whole, it's like one of the last computers ever designed that is basically completely and utterly hinged to the uh, video beam. Um, it's amazing. That's why it's such a demo scene hotspot. 2014? Was it that long ago, man? I can only have to get you do another one on a Sunday or something. Next next Nova, yeah? You do a, a DJ set for us again, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, because actually on the Saturday afternoon, whilst uh, us lot are fucking running around for, you know for hours being mental it'd be really nice to have something nice i'll do a chill out one uh i mean you could do both mate i mean you know two sets I'll do do a beach set that's where you bring out your hardcore um anyway we're getting massively uh uh, uh we massively digress here uh oh that was my timer test i don't need that anymore we can get rid of that that's fine <laughs> um, that's fine though. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think we're going to get much more on the titles today. We've got a structure though, right? So we've got a structure. We've got some. Uh, we got some. I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to do that now. But yeah, it's right about now. Any seven that um, one of your. Uh, uh, mic drop mod requests would be pretty handy right now. Uh, any seven has to go by law now. Oh, yeah, as I'm took. Well, I mean, can you do the pull up? Because I need, I need the pull up. Dermazoo. No, that's <laughs> that's the wrong website. <laughs> uh, any seven. There we go. That's what I was after. Oh, Impulse Tracker. Oh, right. Can, no, before we play this, I know we can play it next and play. What is the desired tracker to play this in? That's very white, that. So if there was a PC tracker I could run it in and we could look at it, wh which one should we do it in? Because I'd rather watch it in that. All right. Uh, oh, would you say Schism Tracker is bestest? Okay. Now that's no, no. Uh, Schism Tracker. There we go. Uh, Windows 64 bit. Yep, lovely. And I imagine that's just a. Um, uh, okay. Yep. Beautiful. Let's see. Come on. Slash Dev Tools. Uh, okay. Come on, give me some space here. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh <laughs> continue. Oh my god. Uh, main menu. It's Settings menu, preferences. That's no, not what. No. System configuration. 
full screen. Yes. No. Do you know what? I might actually just switch. I guess I'm gonna switch to Trackmeister, actually, because I can't I can't read that. Uh, Trackmeister. There we go. Uh, yep. Uh, see, come on, slash dev tools. Uh, T. Okay. TM. Okay, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I tested this is out already. Okay. And then we can just put your tune in there, can't we? Oh no, that's in the zip file. So that's how long it's taken to just like get your tune up is is um it's interesting, isn't it? Uh okay, there we go. Right. Let's go! There we go. What a tune, man. That is a banger, that. I do love that. Uh, track, what I don't like about Trackmeister is it's quite hard to get out of it and um, uh, get the next thing on. Right, so uh, I picked this one out next because um, uh, I just wanted to hear it again. And it is this one. Yes, excellent. This one by Subby. 
um, a track called Crossfader Persuader. And um, you'll hear it properly now. An absolute banger. <laughs> oh, mate, that is, um, that's, I mean, I'm glad I picked that one up again. It's so good. It's literally my favourite track of yours. It's just amazing. Um, and as we were talking about rule changes, um, why don't we demonstrate... Um... <laughs> Uh, comparatively normal. I have no idea what you guys are talking about most of the time. Uh, I like to hear, though. Amazing. <coughs> Chris, to you. <coughs> Thanks for hanging out, man. Um, so we were talking about the revision rule change. Um, and in... Uh, oh, God, what year was it now? It was up on here. Uh, 2018. Don't worry. Don't worry. My eyes. The goggles do nothing. Nothing <laughs> No, we're not sticking pattern skank on. We're going to stick the one that uh, put the, the cat amongst the pigeons, aren't we? That's the one. And we want the uh, uh, mod pattern display. 
The one with the progress bar. Hang on. No, 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 no. No, that is not right. That's the version that doesn't have the things in it. No. Uh, hang on. There we go. There, that looks better. <laughs> yeah, one, uh, two meg. There you go. No. I've. Uh, hang on. Let me just sort this out properly. Here we go. Right. There. I'm really failing at this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let's try that again, shall we? Right. That should be fine.
to just blur the uh, tracker cells a little more together though, right? I mean, that's the idea, right? <laughs> there you go. That's Reclamation by Logicoma. Um, a, a demo uh, in a um, tracker visualization platform um, made. Um, what year was that now? Bloody hell. Uh, 2018. Blimey. It's quite a while ago now, isn't it? A demo tune with a demo in a tracker. So um, and we've got a couple more demos left, actually. Uh, let's put my face back on. There we go. Um, we can go with disc four. Um, no, I, I picked already. Uh, sorry. Uh, right, I don't know what these are either. Let's find out. No, it's, it's a DOS disc. I think I've got any track modes actually. Oh, it's quite big. There's data. Hear that loading? That's a lot of loading. <laughs> I went backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pattern break nastiness. Oh, Subby, let me VIP you, mate. There you go. Repost it. Oh, this is a lot of the disc. Unique multicolor final version calculating. Oh, what does that mean? There we go. Clappity clap clap. I mean, yeah, some of those scenes don't run very well on this poor little lowly 500. Some of them do, though. So, you know, it's a really great demo. 2008 as well. Uh, okay, so this is the last demo of the evening. God, I hope it's a good one. Oh, 
It's a big one. Waiting silently. We just loaded the same demo. Nope. It's crashed. It has, hasn't it? I mean, it's the end of the demo, but at the same time, um, yeah, it fell over. So, but press the big red, okay. Oh, look at these, di look, slummy, what's these direct address compares for, man? Put it in a variable stack. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we got to the end. <laughs> Just let me say, but I wonder why that's broken. CIA timers, probably. And um, lots of code um, absolutely hammering the CPU, which is, you know, usually, uh, usually the case. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Just leave that running in the background. Right. Um, that's it. That's it for today. Uh, let me just uh, press a button here somewhere. There we go. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, we made some progress. We fixed a bug. And we made some structures ready for me to actually do some work. Um Oh, comparatively normal is now following. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, let me go here. 
pressing buttons. See you, Ron. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Commander Keen, NE7, Pyru, uh, Neversoft, Blitter Object, uh, TTD. Thanks for a great stream as always. Thank you very much. Uh, Hooverphonic, thanks, mate. Night Shift. I will respond to your message. I saw you sent it. I'll sort one out. Uh, I'll sort something out tomorrow. Squack to my phone. At Samson Mayer. Uh, the Lizard. Uh, NE7. Bitwise is doing fantastic work. Um, uh, making its first ever game. It's great to see. Um, uh, there, press that button. Uh, I know. Don't worry. <clears throat> They're here, mate. I I've got them saved, mate. All right, don't worry. I'll, s I'll save it for you. All right. We will save whatever's on there. Doctor, thank you very much, mate. Retro Hitch. A barn, 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 barn. Thank you very much as well. Uh, we're going to raid. Let's just raid Charlie. Because Charlie's playing pl playing new games, isn't he? And, uh, I mean, you can't get enough of that accent, can you? He's amazing. So, uh, anyway, uh, I'll be back next Wednesday. Um doing more of the music disc stuff you'll see where what's happened to it since uh the last time we've met so um which um any message for him a up that's it that's all we want to say a up uh here we go right a up we're going to charlie see you next week bye see bye <laughs>